feet under the knees. Flow the buttock towards the back of the knees initially. Then descend the buttock bones and turn the upper arm bones out so that the center chest lifts. Once the arms turn out, really feel that the corners of your shoulders flow towards the elbows. And observe how that begins to descend the shoulders down and away from the ears. So then in no way do you lift from the top, but the chest is lifted from beneath. And bring the hands together and close the eyes. Again, feel that pressure in the outer corner of the heel of the hand. And as well there, observe how that brings the shoulders down and away from the ears. Taking any strain off of the trapezius to lift the chest and bringing that lift into the base of the chest. Observe the breath in the side body as you soften across the face. And then join me for the sound of OM. the head down towards the center chest and surrender there. Release the hands with the palms up. Bring the head up with closed eyes. Then softly open the eyes. All right, let's come up to standing. Um, okay, good. Clifford, how's your back? So, so, okay. All right, so once you come to standing, bring your hands to your hips for a moment. In fact, um, you know what, get a brick. And get two bricks while you're at it, because we'll use them, I think, when we do our standing poses. But to begin with, Take the brick, turn it that way, right? So the long edges are facing out to your inner feet. And then bring the feet to the brick. So the whole inner foot touching the brick, the base of your big toe mound and your inner heels there touching the brick. Keep your hands at your waist for a moment. And of course, roll the shoulders back and down. Now that give just a little bend to your knees, and when you do, roll again the buttock flesh down. Of course, you can feel that right there at your inner feet, but now as you keep the knees bent, bring pressure, kind of like the, the bold pressure in your foot, to this region in your outer heel. I want you to feel that that area stakes down first and foremost. Observe already when that happens, there's a slight lift in your inner ankles. Even though the knees are bent, you'll be able to feel that, of course, you put weight in the outer heel, so the inner heel will have a lift. So now focus on two things, outer heel down, but also how your weight's back, so it's in the heel, right? 
And now as you press that outer heel, slowly begin to lift through your knees and observe how it will change the outer border of your leg, particularly the outer knees open. And then as the knees lift to straight, that outer leg becoming firm all the way to the outer hip. Spread the weight from the small toe mound towards the big toe mound, which also begins to take the inner groin back. Now, as you do that, feel the outer ankle firms in, but the inner ankle can lift up towards the inner thighs. Shoulders back and down, and then arms to your sides for Tadasana. You can, of course, surrender through the shoulders, but find that constant lift of the inner leg, which contributes to lift your chest from beneath. Breathe into the side body. Then bring the palms together for Badangulyasan. Interlock the fingers. Keep those outer arms forward as they pull up out of the waist. But again, ignite the work in your legs so that you truly feel that lift through the inner legs. And that really is a double-sided or a double-edged sword, right? The outer heels have to be down, but you got to keep that spreading in the mounts of the foot so that your thighs are back. Build the lift in the lift in the chest from beneath. Then arms forward and down. Change the crossing of your fingers. And same thing again. So it just occurred to me as I was thinking about class today, we haven't done this work with the bricks in a while. And it's nice fundamental work to kind of reinvigorate the effort in the legs. And then arms forward and down. So that's awesome. So now go ahead and pick this brick up. Turn it that way, so the narrow way, and bring it all the way up to the top of the legs. And bring your feet as close together as you can. So now the inner foot of the opposite foot acts as that brick, right? Now bend the knees just a little. Bring the hands to your waist so the butt goes down. It's like your tailbone is reaching to the brick. It gives a greater sense of down to help adjust the pelvis. Find your outer heels and press there. Press with the outer heels, which contributes to the tailbone going down as you lift your knees to straight. Spread from the small toe mound to the big toe mound to take the inner groin and even that brick back without losing the descent of the tailbone. So there's sort of a dance now that help, that happens in the pelvis. Tadasana. But keep that dance in your legs and in the pelvis so that there's a lift that comes from behind the pubic, like it's lifting and crawling up the frontal spine. Now again, palms together. Bottom Willie Austin. So observe how things change in this bottom Willie Austin. Observe how there may be a greater awareness of an uprighted pelvis and continue dancing with the brick back but the tailbone down to help awaken from inside. So we use those exterior landmarks to ignite the interior work. And arms forward and down and change the crossing and up you go again. And then arms forward and down. Release the brake. Go on and set those bricks up on tall behind you. And then, again, Tadasana. Now, no brick, but all those same actions. Keep 
Keep the buttock descending, but feel these two frontal hip points are lifting. Utita Trikonasana. Inhale, jump. Have the tall brick now. Mm. Now, can you find that weight? Go ahead and bend your knees just a little. Find that weight in the outer heel as you lift the legs just straight again. Do all that work again now with the legs wide. Spread the mounds of the foot from the small toe to the big toe mound. To steer that inner groin back, even though there's not a brick there, the work still exists. In order to get the lift from beneath, shoulders descending. Turn the legs to the right. And exhale, come on into the right side, turn that brick on tall, and just have your fingertips on the brick. Now bring your left hand to the left waist, bend both knees. Mm -hmm. Now as you keep both knees a little bent, anchor that outer left heel bone down, keep your right leg bent for a second, and work with straightening your left leg by anchoring that outer left heel down. Now, left leg goes to straight. Now, roll your right knee back towards your right arm, but press the mound of your right big toe and begin to straighten your right leg. Lengthen the right side body from the waist to the armpit chest. And use the press in your outer left heel to begin to turn the lower abdomen to the left. To turn the lower ribs to the left. Right shoulder blade deepens onto the back so it's secure just like the outer right hip. Turn your top chest from right to left. And maybe even the head will begin to turn to the left, but it should not create strain in your neck. Charge that left arm straight up, not back, straight up, to pull up as if the palm of the hand were going higher to the ceiling. Inhale, come on up to standing. Turn the feet forward. Oh, another side. Come on in, find that brick, and bring your right hand to your right waist. Once you're in there, bend both knees. And find the pressure in your outer right heel bone. So that from there, you begin to straighten the right leg. And by the way, once you get the right leg straight and your left knee presses into your left arm a little bit, well, notice that means your weight's going to be in your outer left heel. That's correct. But it continues to flow to that right heel. But now when you go to straighten the left leg, the mound of the big toe has to take over, which pins the outer left hip in. Now do that same thing with your left shoulder blade. Exhale, and as you press the right heel down, flow the abdomen from left to right. Lengthen the left side body, flow the bottom ribs from left to right. Exhale, flow the top chest from left to right. And that's what we mean by once that happens, to lean the head back a little. Mm -hmm. Or now keep your hand on your waist. That, that strain that comes to the neck typically is a sign that this lower area, you've you got to get that turned first so that the neck doesn't strain. Take your time to turn the head. That turn follows the turn that comes all the way from that back heel. Then top arm up. Inhale, come up. Turn the feet forward. And with your exhale, jump. Tadasana. Again, jump. Turn to the right. 
Come on in. This time you can either hold your ankle or use the brick, your choice. So you get the first portion of the pose. So now you decide, keep those legs active, you decide either your fingertips go to the floor or you take that brick and put your hand on the brick, whatever you need, you find out. Look down at your right foot. So notice that initially, especially in going lower like this, when we take the, the hand down closer to the ground, your, your ankle, this front ankle, will lean towards the outer ankle. Observe if that happens. Now bend the knee. Let the knee a little bit press into the arm so that you feel that connectivity into the outer hip. Now, maintain that connectivity, but press the mound of your right big toe down and see how that makes your ankle upright. Keep that ankle upright, lift the knee to straight, as if sucking in from the outer knee into the outer hip. Use the back heel to begin to build that turn. Right shoulder blade on the back. Inhale, come on up. Change sides. Go to the left, and then as you're ready, come on in. Hand to the ankle or the brick, your choice, but go for the depth now. Keep the back outer right heel down, but it flowing in that direction. Then take your fingertips either to the floor or to a brick. Bend your left leg, press into your left arm. So if the right buttock flows down, it gives the left buttock more of an opportunity to also flow towards that right heel. Now as you go to straighten the leg, mound the big toe down, look that the ankle is upright. Maintain that uprightedness as you straighten that left leg. Turning the chest to the right. Inhale, lift from that right arm, come up, turn the feet forward. And with your exhale, be careful of those bricks, <laughs> step or jump. That's awesome. Now, bring the bricks back just a little, put them on medium. Mm -hmm. We're taking Parsvottanasana. Jump. Get your full distance. Turn the legs to the right, and with your exhale, come on in. Right hand to the brick, left hand on your waist. Mm -hmm. Anchor that left heel down, bend the right leg to a square. Now you have that brick under your right hand. It can be moved. It can change as we work here. Keep that outer left heel down so the inner left leg is buoyant, zipping up from the inner ankle to the inner thigh. Look down now. Press the right heel and lift the right foot up so the heel's the only thing on the ground. Keeping that outer left heel down, I want you to begin to straighten the right leg, which means your uh, brick might turn higher. But as you do, straighten as if you're zipping up from the pinky toe mount into your outer right hip. Really exaggerate that. Then... Flip the brick up a little bit so you can exaggerate that more and more and more with your left outer heel going down. Lengthen the right side waist, turn the chest forward. Now, keep both outer hips firm as you reach the mound of the right big toe down. Press the mound of the right big toe down. Left arm up. Observe how all that work in the outer legs brings the tailbone in so that the frontal spine 
from the pubis to the chest can lengthen and be long. So I'm talking about the frontal spine, I'm not talking about the surface here, I'm talking about way deep behind the surface of the body. Lengthen the front surface of your spine. Then inhale and come on up. Turn the legs forward. Change sides. Bend and come on in. Right hand to the right waist. Get that brick. Sometimes to get the outer right heel down, the left leg will lift a little bit out of the bend. That's okay. Get that outer right heel. Feel the outer right heel down. Keep it down as you bend your left leg. Then you can look down at the left foot. Lift the foot up. Heel stays down. Knee stays back into the arm. And when you slowly go to straighten that left leg, straighten as if pulling out from the outer pinky toe edge into your outer left hip, like one long line there. It might even cause a change in your back leg. That's fine. Emphasize that outer foot to the outer hip on your left leg much, much more. Then flip the brick on tall. Keep that emphasis in the outer leg as you reach the big toe mount forward. Really has to lengthen out there and down. Outer right heel down so that the two outer hips are firm and oh, tailbone in. Lengthen from behind the pubis, the frontal spine to the chest, right arm up. So you'll find when you do the poses differently, they, they express themselves differently. It doesn't feel like the same trikonasana as before, but it's still trikonasana. Inhale, pull up from that top arm, come to standing, turn your feet forward. And then with your exhale, jump. Feet hip distance. Inhale, pull the arms up. And exhale, come forward, soft Uttanasana, hold the elbows. Breathe easily now. And then, but just a little bend in your knees. Feel how the two knees roll out slightly from the inner knee to the outer knee, like they're hitting out in order to get the pressure in your outer heels. Pressurize the outer heels, both of them. And as you do then, slowly lift through the knees and observe how then the outer knee opens more. It's like the outer knee becomes active, strong. It'll even give you stability in your outer hip, so you create that's that border of the outer leg. The pelvis has to correspond, but it's flowing down. Maintaining that outer edge of the leg, spread from the small toe mound to the big toe mound. To add in the flow of the inner groin back and the descent now of the frontal body. Exhale, flow the frontal body downward. Then inhale, come all the way back up. Set your bricks aside. Oh, awesome. Um, get a strap. When you get a strap, just make a big loop in it. So it's kind of like that. I think that'll be easier. Maybe. No, maybe not. I take that back. Ha, sorry. Unloop it. Ha. It'll be easier with a straight strap. Uh, watch what we're going to do. I haven't done this in a while. I am going to, here. I'm going to put that strap around the biggest part of my hips. So... We're in white shorts today, so you won't see the strap quite as well, but you see I'm trying to put that around the largest part of the buttock, the middle buttock, 
and then I wrap it around my outer hip and to the center. Then I cross the straps. All right, so it crosses there at the front. So I always say, if any of you ever do, you know, hip measurements. This is a hip measurement. So all that online sizing that you have to do. These are your hips. <laughs> Usually it just wants a waist measurement. But now bend the knees a little, flow the buttock down, find that outer heel. Don't even worry about the strap yet. Now, as you find the outer heel and the buttock descends, gently start to pull the strap, right? The left hand pulls left, the right hand pulls right, and it tightens. And you want that. I always kind of brace my forearm, so I really get some tightness there. Now, outer heels down. Begin to straighten your legs by lifting through your knees. And then spread from the small toe to the big toe. And as you do that, start to pull up here with the strap. So with the strap now, it's like it lifts the frontal hip bones up. Keep it nice and firm. Mm -hmm. So the strap helps to take the tailbone in. Firm the outer ankles to the midline, but lift from the inner ankles to the inner thigh, contributing to the lift at the base of the pelvic floor. Roll the shoulders back and feel how that lift comes inside all the way up to the center chest region. Now maintain that. Just let the strap go. Tadasana. Remember that strap? Shoulders away from the ears. So the shoulders do less, the legs do more. Mm -hmm. Palms together. Now you've got that lift from your inner ankle to the inner leg to the center chest. Now slowly bring the hands to the top of your head. Press that outer rim of your hand together. Seal that. Seal that. Your shoulders have to allow it. Then slowly begin to lift the arms up. And make use of that center line. Now you're pulling up from your chest to that outer heel of the hand. Get longer. Get longer and longer so the tailbone is deeper and deeper. Frontal spine long. Remember how that strap pulled those frontal hip points up. And then Namaskarasan to Tadasan. Good. So now come back to your mat. Tadasana. And we're beginning Virabhadrasana 1. Um, you know what? Grab your strap again. And just kind of fling it around your neck. So we have it. Like, like a little tool belt there. Go on, jump. Take the legs wide. Observe how that outer heel down contributes to the lift of the pelvis. Then bring the hands to the waist, turn your legs to the right as if you were going to do girl one, because you are. Good. So the front heel should be in alignment at least with the back heel. In time, that is heel to arch. You just feel what your body is happy to do now. Press bare weight into your outer left heel. Take your strap. Bring it around your pelvis. That same part of your pelvis, same part of the body. And just cross it there at the front, but you're not doing a whole lot with it yet. Now, outer left heel down. Turn the chest towards the right. And pull with that right hand a little more so you feel how that left, uh, left side of the hip moves. Mound the right big toe down. Firm your inner upper left knee so that it goes back as if that brick were there as you begin to lift the strap up with your hands now. So there's a lift of the abdomen and then again a turn of the chest to the right. Begin to find the balance there. Lift and turn. Lift and turn. Lift and turn. 
Shoulders roll towards the elbows. Keep building the lift of the inner back leg, inner ankle to the inner thigh as you turn the chest. Lengthening the frontal spine from the pubis to the chest. Now keep all of that. Just release the strap or put it around your shoulders again so you don't have to pick it up. Interlock your fingers behind you and roll the shoulders back. Remember how the pelvis just had to work. Mm -hmm. So that as the left heel is down, you can feel the center chest press forward and up. Then come back to center. Hands to your waist. Change sides. So get that outer right heel down. Once you do, go on, use your strap. So it's firm, but keep that outer right heel down. Turn the chest to the left and just a little bit, pull a little more with that left hand. So it teaches that outer leg how it can follow the chest. Mound your left big toe down. So the outer left leg is firm, outer hip in. Then begin to lift the hands up so the chest can lift more. So you lift and you turn the chest to the left. Notice when the lift counts, oh, the pelvis wants to go towards the right. Turn to the left. So that both outer hips become firm and in towards the midline. Now maintain the legs, maintain the hips. Just put the strap around your shoulders. Interlock your fingers and roll the shoulders back now. Now, even as the shoulders roll back, a, a, a more firm press in the back heel can contribute to the center chest lifting forward and up. And then release back to center. Heel toe or step or jump the feet together. Now I think we can set the strap aside. But rebuild the pelvis in exactly the same way that that strap helped you. Forearms face the body so the shoulders surrender. Inhale, jump. Hands to the waist. We're going back to the right, of course. Press and turn. Press and lift. Then arms out to the sides, turn the chest more and more firm, both outer hips, so that you keep in contact with two things, the outer hips firm and the lift from the base. Reach the arms up and hook your thumbs. Pull way up as you press the left heel down and turn towards the right, outer hips in. Do both of those things. Don't act like a frozen statue. Be dynamic with that work. Press and then turn. Press and then lift. Lift and then press. That's it, Natalie. So that as that back heel is down, there's a rebounding action to the thoracic spine, which drives the frontal chest deeply forward and up. Then come back to center, arms to your sides. Exhale, jump. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's what's going on. We're going to do the other side, of course. But now I'm going to get a little picky. Watch. With too many of you, with the exception of Natalie, that's why I mentioned she's. I see you doing it. But the rest of you, I. it could be the camera angle. It could be me, not you. I don't know. <laughs> right? But with the rest of you, I see you building a pose and not moving much. You've, you have to find it. You have to move to find it. So if I'm here, 
theoretically I'm doing the pose, but I've lost the action in my legs. It dissipates with time. So watch how I find it. You see how much I'm willing to move to get that back foot. Do you see that? Is that apparent? Okay, be willing because otherwise, now I don't know if you feel this, so I'll ask those of you here with me. If you freeze frame here and you try and do micro micro inside movements, the chances are that you're gonna get this grip in your lower back increase. Am I correct? Do any of you feel that? Or am I just, uh, is that just me? So, so, all right. We'll try on the other side and see what happens. So be in Tadasan. Forearms face the body, release your shoulders. Jump. Get the outer heels down first so the outer hips firm. Turn to the left. Outer right heel down, turn the chest to the left, mound to the left, big toe down. So both outer hips begin to firm. Reach the arms up, hook your thumbs, and pull way up. And again, begin to play around with those actions. Outer back heel down, keep it down as you turn. Inner upper right knee back as you turn. Continue to build that lift from inside. To culminate into the thoracic spine in, center chest forward and up. Breathe and dance with that a little bit. Move as you feel fit. That's it. So that you start to feel how the legs feed the lift in the spine. How the legs contribute to the lift in the pelvic floor. That's right. As if that strap were there, as if you had a second set of hands doing those actions with this strap. Good. And then come on back to center. Arms wide and jump. Tadasana. Get your chairs. Set the chair up, let's see, so that it is facing you. We're going to kind of do two poses in one. We're going to take Pars Vottanasana, but we're going to add in Parivrita Trikonasana. So why? So that, right, just watch for a second. So that you can experience that firmness in the base. So it's Pars Vottanasana, but we're not going super low. But from here, I want to get the length of the frontal spine, outer hips in. And then it's not a big trikonasana, but it's a trikonasana from that action. Watch the pelvis to turn. Move your hand just to the hip. But you see how this part flows down, outer hip in. And the pelvic floor literally, quite literally, begins to narrow. It's a reaction. You don't think, oh, i got to narrow my pelvic floor. No. But once you start to work your legs properly, you'll see that happens and you can get lean in the frontal body, which frees up these regions in your lower back. Okay? Hope that makes sense. Get your chair. Step the right foot forward and just bring your hands down onto the corners of the chair. Bring the chair quite close to your shin bones so the hands are really under your shoulders. And then it's exactly the same with the legs as you did in beer one, really. Outer left heel down. Turn the chest towards this backrest. Mound to the front big toe. So that inner upper left knee goes back. So the body can flow downward more and more. Feel that entire border of your outer right leg firm. Thanks to the press in the big toe mound. Now bring your left hand to the corner, the right corner of the chair. Drive the left heel down, right hand to the waist, and turn the trunk of the body to the right. 
Your right outer hip has to firm in more. Your inner upper left knee has to squeeze to straighter. And you'll feel that it's as if the pubis hugs to your inner right thigh to some degree. That's a reaction, not the action. Now stand in the back heel and firm the left shoulder blade in. So the right hip hugs in and the left upper back hugs in and hugs you to your midloin. Good, then both hands back down and just change the legs. You can just change from right there. So as you look down at your legs, understand that as you build Parivrita Trikonasana, the midline, in this case, becomes your inner left leg or even the center of your left leg. That means your right side ribs aim for that line, right? Outer right heel down. Mound of the right big toe down. Deflate the abdomen so the buttock can flow. Lengthen through the side body. Now bring that right hand to the outer corner of the chair. Now when you go to put your left hand on your left waist, exhale, push the right heel down, push the right hand down, and begin that turn. Keep that turn, lengthen through the right side body, outer left hip in. And now feel how with your right shoulder blade in, it flows the right side body in the direction of your left middle thigh. And that outer left hip stays in. So those two lines come together, come closer. Clifford, right shoulder blade on your back. Yeah. Yeah, activate that arm. Come on, turn that upper arm bone out. So that shoulder blade presses the back, firms it. You have better keep standing on the back heel and it will give you the movement. Yeah, it will give you the, the energy to do. Good, and then release both hands on the chair seat. Step the feet together. And inhale, come on. Tadasana. Hmm. Okay, let's do that one more time, except let's turn the chair now so the backrest will be by your front leg. So my right leg's forward, my left leg's back, and it's like the backrest is a, uh, a railing. So mound to the left, big toe down, begin to come forward. Inner upper. Back knee flows back, and now left hand to the seat of the chair. Push both hands down as you stabilize the back leg. Lengthen the left side body. So my left side ribs are coming closer and closer into this line of my front right thigh. Lengthen the right side waist. Don't be in your shoulders. Be in your legs. Stand it as if you could just let go with your hands, no big deal. Now reach that left hand down to the bottom rung. Drive the left heel down more as you do it. Press the right hand into the backrest and observe the flow of the abdomen from left to right. Lean the head back a little. Trust your legs. Find out, are your legs being trustworthy? If you can lean the trunk of the body, the shoulders, and the head back a little, then yeah. Then inhale, press the right hand down, come up, turn the feet forward, and step the feet together. So I'm just going to move the chair this way so I can keep seeing you. But you're going to bring your left foot forward now, right foot back. Use the chair. You know, it's meant to help you with your balance right now so that you can focus on your legs. Stake that outer right heel down, buttock down. Come forward over the left leg, maintaining that. Mound your left big toe down so this outer hip, outer leg is firm. Now bring the right hand around. 
Drive the right hand down, drive the right heel down and observe how that changes the pelvis, but it will also change the trunk of the body. It'll make you want to round your shoulders, right? That's okay. Stay with the stability in the legs and lengthen the right side body. Then you start to get the chance to turn your right upper arm out. So turn your palm so the heel of your hand is on that chair seat. You see, so my fingers are pointing at my left leg. Mm -hmm. So that shoulder blade turns out. Good. Press the left hand, flow the abdomen to the left. But again, stand in your legs. Find out what would happen. Ask yourself, what would happen if you let go with your hands? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Then, oh, good. That means, hey, my legs are doing it. Now, exhale, flow that right hand down to the back rung of the chair seat and breathe. Press the left hand. So it's not that I'm trying to get you to do a trick by letting go of your hands, but it's a really good way to self-check if your legs are working. For me, too, the hands want to take over. They want to do it all. They teach the outer body so that the inner body can uptake that work. So see that it does. Then with your inhale, come all the way up, turn your feet forward, and step the feet together. Tadas. Prasarita Paro Tanasana, as you're ready, jump. So obviously, hands to your waist. I, I am asking you to stick to that outer heel action today. So the buttock is down so you get that lift of the inner leg. Roll the shoulders back, lift the chest. That will serve you well to get the lift in the frontal body here. But now as you come forward, keep it, but... Flow, shift the weight from the pinky toe, small toe edge to the big toe mound of your foot. And exhale, bring the crown of the head down, using that weight in the forward part of the foot to add in the flow of the inner groin's back. Mm -hmm. And your hands are on the ground. So don't be afraid to overdo putting the weight in the mound of the foot a little bit. You know, don't, don't do a somersault necessarily, but your hands are right there. So overdo it a little to descend the crown of the head down. Even if you go, wow, I have all the weight or almost all the weight in the mounds of my foot. That's okay. You'll even it back out. Mm -hmm. Um... Neil, your inner groins have got to go back. Your knees are pointing out. Yeah, get those inner groins to go back. Imagine there's a great big brick there that you're trying to move back. Mm -hmm. that's, where, that's where your forward thing is a little stuck, I think. I hope that makes sense, yeah. I get a cramp sometimes too there. That makes sense. But dance around with those actions. Always remember that even though, you know, we hold poses, that hold can be dynamic. It's not a freeze frame. Now inhale, straighten the arms. You can heel toe your feet in a little bit and come all the way up. Step the feet back together. Tadasana. Ordva Hastasana or Ordva Namaskarasana. Hands together or apart. It's your choice. But keep that outer upper arm flowing forward. Yeah? When the hands are together, it gives you more information because this outer heel of the hand will touch and it will teach this part of your arm what to do. Having your hands apart forever and always will not move you forward. Now, lengthen the outer arms up, bend the knees, utkatasana. Weight in the heels, tailbone in. So the flow is inside. That's flow yoga. Find the flow yoga in your body. So the entire frontal spine, 
flows upward and you bend. Inhale, come to standing. Tadasana. Pop your feet hips distance. First two fingers. Exhale, come forward. They grab your big toes. Now again, dance with that a little. Initially, the weight's in the outer heels, but now dance with it and bring the weight forward into the mounts of the foot. Flow the side body forward. Flow the inner groin back. But keep the tailbone in. Inhale. Exhale, bend the elbows wide and flow the frontal spine towards your ankles. And then inhale, come all the way back up. Take yourself to a wall for downward dog. Turn the hands out against the baseboard and walk your feet back. Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. Come on up. Turn around. Same thing again. Anna Loka Svanasana. Lift the knees from above the knees. So there is a lift, not a slamming back of the lower knee. It is from there that you can steer the frontal thighs, the lift of the groin, and the depth of the groin. And then walk your feet forward. Come on up. Ta -da. Head stand. Use a wall or be away from a wall. It is your choice. It will not be a long head stand at all. Um. As you prepare to come up and you interlock your hands, press that outer wrist down to turn the upper outer arm. Okay? So that that outer upper arm pins in. Round the head down, lift the hips. And as you're ready, ha, come on up. I'm going to take off my glasses. <laughs> Now, once you're up, put your balance in. Press the outer wrist down, the center forearm down so the biceps can lift. The outer upper arms turn in the direction of your gaze. But then, separate your feet about hips distance and drive your heel bones up. Imagine those outer heel bones lifting higher furthermore and observe how that firms the outer leg from the outer knee to the outer hip. Keep that, bring the legs 
to gather and spread from the small toe mound to the big toe mound, bringing lift in the inner legs towards that big toe mound, but maintaining the outer leg stability. So buttock is lifted up deeply to take the tailbone in. But at the same time, remember that brick that, it, that was at the top thighs in Tadasana. Keep the tailbone moving to that brick, but move the brick back a little. We're not going to be here long, just one more minute. Steady breath in and out through the nose. Keep the frontal groins open long. But keep looking for the legs to give you that lift by keeping the tailbone in. That will make the work in the arms and shoulders so much easier. Now today, to come down Bend your knees so the heels move towards the buttock. Then press the forearms well. Exhale and begin to bring the knees towards your chest. Press the forearms down. Press the outer wrist down. And then keep that as you reach through the legs to put your toes down gently. Then child's pose. So that will begin to help you learn to come out in a soft way. Then put your hands under your shoulders with an inhale, come up. And let's see, um, open up your mat again. Oh, that's right. Um, yeah, go ahead and open your mat up. And once you do, get a blanket. Um, and place your blanket on your mat. Kind of like this. Have a seat first in Vajrasana, knees together, ankles together. Flow the body to the back of your knees then spread the mounds of the foot to lift the chest. Mm -hmm. Hands at the top thigh so this part of the leg descends. Just be there for a moment. Firm the outer ankles again in towards the midline as you spread the mounds of the foot. Okay, get another blanket for a moment. Have it in this square fold. Mm -hmm. And then you're just going to come forward on the crown of your head. Come forward so the hips are a little forward of your knees. I'm going to turn to the side. So, right, this won't do it. You got to come quite forward so this joint opens and softens, more importantly, softens. Bring that blanket right into the back of the knees where they're soft there. 
Then use your hands. Back to Vajrasana, outer ankles tuck in. This is one of the variations of practice that I, I, in my own personal practice, sometimes I forget to do this more. And gosh, it's like it should almost be an everyday thing because it's so restful to your legs. Feel how it helps the calves and the thighs kind of get pressurized or squeezed. And it makes space in the knee joint. So any of you who ever have issues with your knees, and I do from time to time, it's a very, very old injury. But this will almost release it immediately. And it's subtle. It's not like it's a big, surprising release. It's subtle, but it works. Low back long. Just be there for a moment. In fact, let's interlock the fingers and take Badanguliasana, or Parvatasana in this case. And come down and change sides with your fingers. Keep the low back descending so that the lift of the chest comes from behind the abdomen, not from the pelvis, right? Behind the abdomen. And arms forward and down. Gomukhasana arms, bring the left hand behind. The right arm up. Now, once you get there, surrender the trapezius there on the left so that shoulder releases. But make an extra effort to turn that outer upper right arm, in this case, forward. So the upper right elbow ascends, even as the buttock descends. So it's weird. The left shoulder descends down, the right chest lifts up. And then release, change sides. Right shoulder head, descends like it flows to the elbow. Outer upper left arm turns forward and lifts. And then release. Left hand to the outer right knee, right hand behind. Keep the descent of the body and turn to the right. Press both shins down. So you get that lift from the pelvic floor to turn, to lift and turn the chest. And then change sides. Both shin bones down. Lift from the pelvic floor to lift and turn the chest. Chin up. Hey, chin up, chest up. Notice where your gaze goes. Yeah, if the gaze drops down, it pulls your shoulders with it. Now, you could just lift your gaze up and still keep the chest down. So press the shin bones, get the lift from the base, lift into your side ribs, and build that lift behind the sternum. Mm -hmm. And then come back to center. Keep the outer groins down, lengthen the frontal spine. Hands can come forward. Lengthen the frontal body. And slowly come forward into Yogi Mudrasana. Inner groins releasing and softening as you go. Imagine you're going to hook the bottom of your collarbones beyond your kneecaps. Breathe into the side body. And then hands under your shoulders, and inhale, come up. Now then, come forward, hands and knees, get rid of the blanket. And we're going to sit 
in virasana, so feet are apart, knees stay close together. So when you go to do that again, you can have a blanket or a brick to sit on if you need to, but come to the crown of the head so you can put your fingers behind the knees where it's soft, pull the flesh back and out. Back and out and then sit down between your heels. And of course, if you need something to sit on, just take it. Virasana is, gosh, definitely one of the most useful poses, I think, in a practice. And it doesn't come easily for a lot of people. This took me years and years, maybe decades, <laughs> to really be comfortable in this pose, to truly find comfort. So don't give up on it. In fact, go after it regularly. Kind of like that Vajrasana is worth doing every day. So spread the mounds of the foot from big toe to small toe to help the outer ankles firm in. Keep the buttock flowing to the back of the knees as you do that spreading in the mounds of the foot. Lift your chest. Parvatasana again. Turn those upper arms down. Way up here. So listen, don't get ahead of yourself with getting the arms up. Turn those outer upper arms. Turn them. That's why I oftentimes start at shoulder height because that's where you get that turn. It's easy to lose when you get up here. Turn those outer arms towards the ground as you lift up. Orna, that's incredibly important for your shoulders so that the lift can come from the base. That's it, Kim. Also very important for your shoulders. Now, if I was there with you, I'd pin right here. I'd take two pins and just pin that area in. You feel it? That will begin to give the chest a lift. You can change sides. It's all really so interconnected and magical. You get one part to do a little more, and it will really change the whole pose. The whole body will shift. Release forward and down. Surrender through the legs. So it's like they need to just accept that they're going to be here a little bit. <laughs> Bring your... Uh, um, bring your left hand behind you, right arm up. So this left shoulder, descend it down, just let it go. But now that right arm has to turn, turn it more. Surrender the arms. Second side. Shoulder descends. Turn that upper arm to lift it. Way up by the shoulder. And then release. Hmm. Turn to your right. Spread the mouths of the foot. Get the lift from the base to turn. And exhale, turn to the left. Good. Now come to center. Widen your knees now. A little bit wider than hips distance. Keep the buttock flowing towards the back of the knees as you do that. 
And then you just find out, can your hips stay down here? Now we're gonna come forward into Yogi Mudrasan. If need be, you bring your big toes together. But if you can keep the legs where they are, then do that. Side body forward, frontal spine long, crawl the frontal body forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hands under the shoulders. Inhale, come up. Come to hands and knees. Cross the ankles. Swing the legs forward and straighten the legs. So as you straighten the legs, Heels press into the ground to keep the kneecaps lifted so that you clear that effort in your knees. Heels down, spread the mounts of the foot, all those things to get the kneecaps to lift. Okay. We're going to take shoulder stand. I want you to have a chair for halasana, for under your toes in halasana. Get that all set up, and then I'll, I'll show you why I want you to have that. So, let's see here. Because of my personal circumstances in this room, and because I have this floor covering down, I just put blankets down so that I have a blanket for my head, so my head slides. You could also just have your head on a hard surface, you guys know that. So as you set everything up, you're going to have the chair out beyond your head so that you know exactly the right distance for the chair. You put your buttock bones on your blankets where your shoulders are going to be and move the chair out far enough that your toes are right under the middle of the chair seat. And that's the way to really find the right distance of your chair. You don't want it too close to you or it'll be really quite annoying. And then just take a look at why I'm having you use the chair today. Uh, for you guys in class with me, it's more of a refinement of your pose rather than learning it. But that's important to have and important to do from time to time. We've worked with those outer hips, that gluteal region, a good deal by anchoring the outer heels down. And we'll use that a little bit in halasana. So we're going to start with the chair in halasana, and we'll end either with the chair or you can end without the chair. It'll be your choice. But just watch real quickly. I'll show you what we're doing, and then you'll do it. So just normal shoulder stand. You'll put the strap on behind your back, right above the elbows, tuck those outer arms in, all that stuff. But now I know I'm bringing my toes to that chair seat. So, by the way, outer arms turning out, palms pressing down to build the width of the chest. Then, when I come into Halasana and I flow the buttock to the heel. Right. I want to feel those outer heels push further, faster, first, then I spread from the small toe mound to the big toe mound, which gets the inner thighs, inner groins up. But it makes the outer legs firm. So it's kind of the point. So first I'm just in halasana. We can even we'll interlock our fingers to get a nicer turn there. 
Then, once you're there for a moment, you know, there's this sutta konasana that we do from time to time. Well, you're going to do one leg at a time. The foot comes down, outer heel down to the foot. So you get this outer hip up. Then the other. And you can do that a couple times. It's kind of nice, regardless of if you're used to taking the legs wide. It's nice because it teaches the outer hip up and then the length of the inner leg. And then you can start to do both if you feel safe there. Otherwise, you just alternate. Then you come back to center either on the chair or off of the chair. Karna Pidasana, either off the chair or on the chair. Okay? And then we'll come down. All right. So get ready. Hmm. When you get that strap around your arms, really experience the turning out of the upper arms, but the palms pressing flat into the bolster. That is precisely the action I've been kind of harping about in Tadasana for many months. <laughs> Right? It creates a space in your upper chest that is essential. I'm good. When you're ready, exhale, take the legs to the chair. Once you do, interlock the fingers behind you to get a greater turn in your upper arm bone. Flow the corners of the shoulders again to the elbows. Yeah. And when you're ready and the hands come to the back, Flow the buttock to the heels and drive your outer heels further back. Observe how that catches the outer groins. Then spread the mounds of the foot from small toe to big toe mound. Yes, to lift the kneecaps and to flow the inner groins upward towards the ceiling. So you maintain the tailbone in. Now I didn't show you shoulder stand, but you all know shoulder stand. But to come up today now, first lift the right leg up. Keep your left leg where it is. Keep the outer left hip lifted towards your right foot. Yes, and press through the mound of your right big toes. So the right leg turns from outside in. Then lift your left leg up. Now walk the hands up the back and straight away separate your feet by hips distance and drive your heel bones up. Press up with your outer heel bones more and notice what happens to your legs. For most of us, the legs will turn out just a little. Yes, good Clifford. Feel how that gives a lift to your buttock all the way from the top of the flesh of the buttock upward. Now, maintain that as you bring the inner edges of the feet together and then add in the spreading of the mounds of the foot so the big toe mound ascends higher than your heels. Get the inner feet all the way together. Yep, I know even if they're uneven, now press the mouse of the foot upward to lift the frontal thighs up. Mm -hmm. Kim, imagine my knee is in your tailbone. That's right. Come on. And I've got my hands on your thighs and I'm pulling your front thighs up. Yes, ma'am. Now press with the mouse of your foot so it somewhat takes your thighs back and your tailbone forward so you get more of a vertical lift. Mm -hmm. And that's what we mean by opening your frontal groins. You want to feel that front groin where it attaches to your hip. Yeah, it gets longer and more open. As if 
you are lying on your back in Supta Virasana. So now with that in mind, listen, your big toes are going to stay close together, but your knees are going to come apart as you bend your knees and bring your heels towards your buttock, keep your knees lifting up. It's not Baddha Konasana Orna. Just bend your knees towards your buttock. It's like Virasana. It's Virasana in shoulder stand. Yeah, Virasana, feet towards your buttock. Hey, but knees to the ceiling. Yeah, knees to the ceiling. Yeah, like you're lying back in Virasana. The knees will separate Clifford, let them. Yeah, that way it gives you some lift. And now take your feet down like your toes are trying to look at the ground. Toes down, Kim. Knees up. Knees up. Front thighs up. Yeah, use your hands. That's better. Yeah, that's where I want you to go with it. Now you're going to put your feet back on the chair. So the knees come to your chest. Reach out through your toes and put your feet on the chair. Correct. Do your best to keep your feet together when you're doing those actions. Now, it's like you get to start over. So walk your hands up your back. Flow the buttock to your heels. Press the outer heels away more, Orna. Orna, your hips are trying to be a very sharp 90 degree angle. And that's part of the reason, in my opinion, that you have a hard time opening your hips. Flow the buttock to your heels. Get your outer heels to push away. It will feel like a roundness in your sacral region. That's better. Keep, keep after it. Spread the mounds of the foot also so the inner groins have a lift. Walk your hands higher up your back, all of you. Uh huh. Get even the outer corner of your hand to press your back. Now, your right leg stays. With an exhale, lift your left leg up. Mm -hmm. Your right leg stays. Outer right hip lifts to the ceiling. Hey, we're doing Ekapada Shirshasan. Left leg up. Mm -hmm. Outer right hip lifts to your left foot. Press through the mound of your left big toe to the ceiling to turn your left leg from outside in. Now, listen. You only have one leg up. So with the mound of that left big toe pressing up, Feel your hands are on your back. Your tailbone is in. Now lengthen the front of your left thigh up to the mound of your left big toe. Kim, that's it, Kim. You've got that leg up right now. Good job. Keep it there and bring the other leg up. Yes, lengthen the front of your legs to go up. Yes, that's better, Kim. Now, Separate your feet by hips distance. Drive your outer heel bones up and lift the flesh of the buttock up. Yeah, pin those outer heels. Don't let your feet come forward down. Keep them up. And then bring the inner edges of the foot together and mounds of the big toes up again and open the frontal groins. Mm -hmm. Now, Virasana in shoulder stance. So the knees will separate a little. You bend your feet and your toe mounds. It's like your toe mounds are trying to look at your bolster. So uh, the best way I've heard it described, keep your knees lifted. The, yeah, the frontal groins should learn to open here. And the best way I've heard it described is imagine your big toe mounds are like a searchlight. And they are searching the bolster behind you. They're trying to shine a light on that bolster behind you in order to open your frontal groins more. Lift your chest, Natalie. Mm -hmm. Now, to put your feet back on the chair, the knees move towards your chest. Exhale and bring your toes together to the chair. And you've done it. Voila. Good. The rest is fairly quick. Buttock to the heels, spread the mounds of the foot. Now we're going to touch into Supta Konasana. So take the right foot over to the right side of your chair and put it on the ground. Yeah, that's it. Over there to the side. Feel how the outer heel pushes away, the mounds of the foot push away, and the leg is stable. Yeah, bye. And then put that foot back up on the chair and do the other side. Mm -hmm. Good. Now put that foot back up on the chair. Do the first side. 
And if you feel stable, you can take both feet, one to each side. If you don't feel stable, alternate. And it can just be a refinement of your pose. Mm -hmm. Good, Jason. And that's fine. You went right into Parsa Halasana, and that's wonderful. This is actually just Supta Konasana, so it's just the legs wide. But do that on the other side, because that's a good way to get there, too. Yeah, and then once you've completed that, either toes go onto the chair or feet go under the chair. And you take um, Karnapidasana, the knees bend towards your ears. So if your feet are on the chair, your toenails just hook that front edge. Or if your feet are on the floor, they don't. Good, Jason. Good, everybody. Then as you're ready, gently release and roll yourself all the way back down. Take a few moments there once you touch down. And then you'll slide yourself back so the shoulders come off the back edge of those blankets. So shoulders on the ground now. Blankets in the middle, upper back. Observe how that can help the broadness there in the upper armpit chest. Cross your legs into swastikasana. And oh, hey, there's another opportunity for that length in the frontal groin and now even the inner groin. Change the crossing of your legs. And then be careful of your chair back there behind you, but slowly slide yourself back. You may need to move the chair. But then when you get to where your hips are about to come off those blankets, go very slow. So the whole low back gets that length. And then lengthen the legs out over your blankets. And let's take Shavasana there with support under the legs today. Arms out to your sides. It's going to be kind of a short Shavasana. Shoulders and neck surrender and soft. Observe the pause at the bottom of the exhale. And then bring the hands to the frontal body. Bend your legs and roll yourself onto the right hand side. Use the hands to press the floor away from all. Hmm, and that's all for day for today, everybody. Namaskar. Good to see all of you.